Welcome back to another edition of Special Situations Investing with Greg Miller. It's Greg Miller here, and today I am talking about where you can find the investment returns in tender offers. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of my YouTube channel on Special Situations Investing through and my personal investing practice. As a quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Any companies that I mention in this presentation are discussed solely for illustrative purposes. Discussing such companies and the specifics about them is to help educate me and educate you about certain special situations. It is not a solicitation to purchase them. I recommend that you conduct your own research and identify why you might want to own the company yourself prior to your committing of any funds. I also recommend that you seek the services of a financial advisor that has considered your personal situation as your fiduciary. And then finally, may your education here grow your knowledge, improve your personal investing performance, and give you the confidence to take control of your future. Thanks a bunch for watching. Now on to the video. Where can you find capital gains in tender offers? I asked myself this question as I was looking into them, and probably some of the best information that I found was in the book by Marie Schiller, and it's this one, The Investor's Guide to Special Situations in the Stock Market. And it's chapter 12 of this book, and I'm going to be going over that book, or the some of the things that come from that book, so that you can look at it yourself. I highly recommend you pick up your own copy. If you want to help me out as an investor and as a YouTuber here, you can use the affiliate link and and buy your book through Amazon and I get a little bit of a kickback that allows me to then create continue to create content for you. So thanks a bunch if you do that and I appreciate uh, you helping out the channel that way. So let's dig in to the things that help with the special situations of tender offers. So the first one is Marie Schiller tells us that the fundamental principle of a tender offer is that they will offer you a premium above the market price for a designated security. You see this in almost every single tender transaction. And I've seen this over the past 10, 10 months that I've seriously looked at this special situation. And I've noticed that, especially if you have the, the specific amount of a tender offer, out there and it's a set amount for the shares that they are buying back, most companies, the the share price will almost immediately rise to that that level and it'll stay within one to two percent of the tender offer ultimate price. This makes it so that it's if it's just for a plain Jane cash transaction that there's there's not a lot of uh, opportunity in the in those positions, but it it does it does meet the criteria that that was talked about by Marie Schiller. The second time thing that he points out is that securities that are sought through a tender offer may rise substantially above the level of the offers. Uh, we saw this recently in the Seneca Foods, and I'll put a link in here and you can take a look at my analysis and then subsequent results of the Seneca, Fo Seneca Foods transaction. Uh, but basically the share price of Seneca Foods rose from where the tender offer was when it was first announced and then rose above even the value of the the highest price on the Seneca Foods. And a, a regular way trader could get about 20% return over the, the course of a few weeks. And you know, that that's not a that's not a bad gig right there at all. Number three, the tender price may be raised to expedite consummation of the buyer's objective. So sometimes buyers will go in and they'll have, uh, they're doing this tender offer for a merger. Now, uh, I have a limited amount of information on this. I don't know if this is going to be something that I see from time to uh, often. Uh, I haven't seen a good example that comes to mind that would be uh, an example of this type of uh, experience to make capital gains in your tender offer. However, there are times when, when share prices uh, or the price is raised for a tender offer, and we'll talk a little bit about that one, but it's there's a better section where we'll talk about that uh, later on. 
Number four, a tender invitation may indicate the true worth of a security. So the, the tender offer that I talked about last week, Anel Americas, where they are being, their ADSs are going for 7,000 um, Chilean pesos. They had third party uh, advisors that basically said, we are seeing this company combined with the merger agreement that's going on with Anel uh, Growth or in El Green Properties, I think is what it is, the, that this company should be worth uh, 150 Chilean pesos on the Chilean stock exchange. And the ADS has a different uh, adjustment rate between the two, so the, Chile the ADS is going for 7,000 Chilean pesos or 140 um, Chilean pesos on the actual stock exchange. Uh, that, that one's a little confusing, and it can be confusing, and... I think part of the reason why it is confusing is uh, somebody's somebody's making money on it, and I know that I will probably do pretty good with this one as well. And I've, uh, I, in full disclosure from last week, I have decided to participate in this one, and uh, we'll we'll see how it turns out. But I think I think this one will turn out pretty good over the, over the course of a few weeks or a few months, depending on how I decide ultimately decide how I want to play this. Number five. The stock price of a tender uh, of, of a company that's participated in a tender offer may drop significantly post the tender offer uh, conclusion. Now, Maurice Schiller talks about this one. I have not been able to find one that that I can cons or a way to consistently identify that the share price is going to go down. I haven't really decided how I I, I would play this this thought process. I just don't know, uh, and you know this. This is part of the reason why I like investing so much. Is it's causing my mind to think, and I'm trying to learn more about uh, the the special situation of tender offers and how I can I can play it in my own investing practice. Uh, maybe you guys have had better experience than I have. I just don't know if if I will uh, if if I'll feel comfortable going into it. I just haven't seen. Too many experiences where it's been bad on the downside. Now, I know that that's one of the things that can cause a significant amount of risk is when we only see one side that's that's going well for us. And this is something that I have been concerned about, and it's one of the things that that scares me a little bit about investing in tender offers. I just haven't had, I haven't been burned enough to make me feel like I truly understand all of the risks that are involved with this. Be that it is, as it may, that doesn't keep me from keep from continuing to try to to try doing this because I kind of take the perspective that I've observed in Warren Buffett and some of the other great investors. You know, you think about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger; they they talk of often about how their investing their investments in Berkshire Hathaway have dropped by half a percent, at least two, maybe even three different times over the times that they've owned the company. Uh, guess what? You're in, in investing. This is something that's going to cause risk. And if you don't feel like, uh, if you don't feel like I'm showing you enough about the risk in these videos, please let me know in the comments below because uh, I, I'm not sure where I would go with this, but the more information that I have from, from you as my uh, watchers, allows me to uh, make better content for you individually. Number six, the tender may disclose a battle for control of a company. So this is the point that I was talking about where sometimes tender offers may, may raise prices. And I observed this and it was, it was extreme in this situation and I don't know if we'll see this very often, but in this case, it would have been awesome had I known about and participated in tender offers previously. I get excited about this one because this one was the Tetraphase Pharmaceuticals and it was the second tender offer that I did. And you can look back at the videos and, and see my experience with it. But this one, had I started off and bought into it when it first got uh, uh, up for a tender offer, I would have probably returned somewhere between 250 to 300% returns over a course of about three to five months. 
it's like the fish that got away, you know, and I feel like this is the the fishing story that everyone wants to talk about when they talk about investing. And yeah, it's the one that got away. And yeah, that's that's the case. Uh, I still did pretty good with this with this tender offer, and I'm not disappointed with my results. However, this this element, if you start seeing the battle of control for a company coming up with tender offers, make sure that you don't tender your shares until the very end of each uh, open period because you can you can cap capitalize on these situations and make a significant return. Number seven, Murray Schiller, his final thought is that sinking fund opportunities may provide uh, longer term capital, capital gain potential. And uh, I, I must admit that I have not spent my time looking at the sinking fund opportunities that, that are in, in these businesses. Uh, if you're not familiar with, a, with a, what a sinking fund is, sometimes companies will will have like a certain type of security that they want to retire over time, be it debt, preferred equity, or equity itself. <clears throat> and they and they create this sinking fund where they they buy that identified security over the course of three to five years or or even longer. And and their purpose is, is to reduce the cost of equity and the cost of that security on the company's operations. I have not spent my time looking at this, and I, I'm in full disclosure, I just don't see this one as being worth my time with the amount of returns that I've been able to generate through the shorter term tender offer participation in Dutch tenders and exchange offers and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe that'll change over time, and I'm pretty sure it will because, you know, as, as Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger talk about, uh, your size does change the the opportunities and the the returns that you can you can get out of an activity and so uh, as my portfolio grows and I have more capital to to employ I'm sure that 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 offer uh, that this might be something where I could spend more time over the long term so after, I, after I've done this, I, I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the things that I just don't know. And, and the reason why I want to share with you the things that I just don't know is because you, as one of my viewers, should be aware of what position that I am in as an investor. So I'm going to talk about two different things, and I think that you should be aware of these things uh, going forward or any time that you invest in tender offers and you're, you're looking at the stuff that, that some random guy posts on YouTube. So I question the following with my experience. The first is a lot of these returns that I've generated, and it's uh, my initial capital back in, in June of last year was about $8,000. It, it, it almost doubled over, that, over the past 10 months. However, that has been on the coattails of the COVID experience, uh, the, the post-COVID recession experience. And so I can't guarantee to myself that I'm going to continue to have these types of returns <clears throat> over, over a longer time period. Uh, of, uh, I did some calculations before I started putting additional, because uh, I had a new infusion of capital at the beginning of, of the year, because that's when I invest in my in my IRAs and 401ks. Um, but that new infusion of capital, even with that, I still have returned almost 50%. Uh, the calculation I put in this morning was 45% of my overall uh, capital inflows. Uh, at the beginning, it was closer to almost 100% returns. And I, I, I'm sorry, I get really skeptical when I see those types of returns and I don't see any of the downside risk. And so for me, I'm concerned that this, uh, this is a strategy that may not continue over the long term. It could be that the COVID response was a lot of companies that were getting ready to buy back shares decided to buy back more shares and they may not do it next year. And so the tender offers may not be as 
uh, plentiful next year. My second concern is that I am publishing my... Uh, I'm, I'm giving you my playbook. So you're watching my videos, you're seeing my playbook. I can imagine that there is smart money out there of other people that will eventually get to a point where they're going to see things like this and they will participate themselves. And that participation is going to drive down overall returns over the long term. You know, it's a risk that I'm taking. I personally feel like the reason why I'm doing this is because I have spent a lot of time trying to learn these things and I wanted to make it easier for the person that may be coming after. And that they may be more interested in some of the other special situations that people invest in, but you know, when we're looking at tender offers, this is this is the fast and the quick way to generate relatively uh, consistent returns, and and that's uh, that's been my observation over the past the the past year. In summary, over the past ten months, I've participated in seventeen different tender offers, and I've had losses on two of them, uh, but overall, it's been pretty consistent. It's earned relatively decent returns and I've been I've been very pleased with my my results hey comment below let me know what you what you think of this video and also if this is the type of content that you're looking for please continue to hit the like button it helps me identify that I'm creating uh, I'm creating content that you care about so thanks a bunch guys we'll catch you next week